Hello everyone, welcome to Anatomy and Physiology, Introduction to the Human Body. This is a quick review. So we are going to be talking about the anatomy portion and the physiology in this review session, but we're gonna be concentrating now on anatomy. So what is anatomy? Anatomy is the study of structure. So think of it like this, you know, um, look at a car. You have car, you have a car that has car parts, and then just knowing the car parts doesn't really tell you how the car operates. So how the car operates is term, we use the term physiology if it was the human body. All right, so most AMP students, they make this mistake. I cannot stress it enough. They make this mistake. They just learned the anatomy portion. They make flashcards and all of that, which is great, but they completely ignore the physiology portion. So anatomy, again, study of the car parts or the body parts in this case, and then physiology will be learning how all of those parts work, how they operate. So we're gonna be talking about the subdivisions of anatomy. Um, there are three basic subdivisions. These are not the only ones, but since this is a review, we're cutting right into it. Cytology, cytology is a study of cells, all right? So don't let the word cytology scare you. It's just, it just means the study of cells. Then, um, we have histology, but before we get to histology, someone might say, why do we need to study cells? Cells are the basic unit of life. So when you know what it, what's happening on a cellular level, it will help us to understand what's happening as a whole. And when you put a whole bunch of cells together, what do you get? You get a tissue. So the study of tissue is called histology, all right? And then pathology is not really dealt with in anatomy and physiology, but pathology is the study of diseases, anatomical changes due to diseases. So someone might say, why do I need to know that? Well, pathology and histology are connected. Histology, we're, in histology, we're learning how things look like on a normal basis, right? And then if something's off, it looks weird, then that would be pathology. Pathology, that's why we say it's the study of diseases. If you've ever heard of the word biopsy, then you've heard of the word pathology. So pathology is basically biopsy. You know, someone might say, well, um, that's where you get like cancer, you wanna know if something's cancerous or not, and so on, and that's basically pathology. So then we're gonna be learning about the levels of structural organization, building our way up until we get to the individual level. All right, so the atom is the most basic unit, even more basic than the cell. Then when you have a whole bunch of atoms come together, what do we get? We get molecules, right? We get molecules, and when you get a whole bunch of molecules come together, we get an organelle. What we're looking at here is a mitochondria. We're still gonna be talking about organelles. Organelles are basically mini organs that we find inside a cell. And then we are going to see all the organelles coming together and forming a cell. In, uh, for this example, we have a red blood cell. All right, we have a red blood cell. And when you have a whole bunch of cells come together, like I said in the previous slide, we have a tissue. Blood is a tissue. Yes, most people don't know this. Blood is a tissue. And then when we have a whole bunch of blood come together, we get an organ. So here we see a blood, blood, um, blood inside a blood vessel. So that makes it an organ. And when you have a whole bunch of organs come together, you have the heart, the blood, the blood vessels, then we have the cardiovascular system. We have a system, all right? Um, and then when we have a whole bunch of systems come together, then we get an individual. So we have 11 um, systems that we're going to be discussing. All have to work together in order to um, make up the individual in order for the person to be, uh, you know, for, for the individual to work, for the, all the systems have to work. If one or two of the systems are not working properly, then the person will be ill, then we say there's a disease. So we're gonna start off with the integumentary system. 
the integumentary system um, it forms external body covering so that consists of hair skin nails everything on the outside of the body they help to protect our um our deeper tissues our organs right and they contain cutaneous receptors we're going to be talking about that when you see here the word cutaneous think skin um and then there's going to be sweat glands sweat and oil glands all right those are also part of the integumentary system. So the next system would be the skeletal system. So most people just think, oh, that's bone. No, um, cartilage are also involved. And the main job of the skeletal system is to protect and support the body, the or um, protect the organs, provide a framework for the muscles to attach, right? So the movement can occur. Blood, yes, the blood flowing in your body is made inside the bones. It's made within the bones. Minerals are also stored there, minerals such as calcium. So for example, when your calcium is um, low, if there's low blood calcium, it's gonna go to the reservoir, which is inside the bones and suck out all the calcium that it needs until it gets to the normal level. The next system is going to be the digestive system. So the digestive system, the main job is to break down food into substances that your body can use. Your body cannot absorb pasta and bread and rice, but it can absorb glucose and amino acids and lipids, right? So it breaks it down um, to body cells and anything else that's not digestible will be eliminated as feces. Then onto the cardiovascular system, which consists of the heart, blood, and blood vessels, all right? Um, the blood vessels are going to transport blood, which carries gases such as oxygen, and the heart will pump out the blood. So most people usually forget that blood is actually part of the cardiovascular system, and blood is so important because it carries oxygen. Anywhere that blood does not go means that there is no oxygen and any tissue that doesn't get oxygen and an organ that doesn't get oxygen will die so and you know the heart obviously is a vital part of the cardiovascular system is a vital part of the body but blood is just as important the blood vessels are just as important so we're going to go on to the next slide which is going to we're going to be discussing the other parts um i also forgot to mention um for the digestive system um we're going to be talking about the organs later on all of these systems we're going to be talking about the organs that are involved in the digestive system so i didn't mention the digestive system um, the organs there because we have a whole bunch um in there and we're going to be discussing them when we get to the digestive system so the next thing is going to be the endocrine system. So the endocrine system, think hormones, all right? Um, there's going to be glands, and these glands are distributed all over the body, all right? And they're going to secrete hormones, and these hormones, they help to regulate several processes in our body, such as growth, reproduction, metabolism, um, we're going to be talking about them later. And then the respiratory system. The respiratory system, most people just think lungs. No, um, the respiratory system involves other organs we're going to be talking about later on. And the respiratory system, the, the main job here is to keep the body supplied with oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. And the gas exchange occurs through the lungs. So the lungs obviously main, you know, main part, main organ of the respiratory system. Then there's gonna be the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic and immune system. So this is two systems in one, all right? So the lymphatic system involves lymph vessels picking up fluid leaked from blood vessels. So when blood is moving in and out, we're talking about gas exchange and so on, fluid leaks out. So these are clear liquid, not blood. So that fluid needs to be picked up and return back to blood. 
and that's going to be the job of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system also has the white blood cells, which are called lymphocytes, all right? Um, this, uh, these play a big role in immunity in the immune system, and the immune system is important for mounting an attack against any foreign substances within the body. Next, we have the muscular system. So the muscular system focuses mainly on skeletal muscles, the muscles that are attached to bones, all right? We have other types of muscles in the body, but we are focusing on the muscles attached to bones here. So this allows the skeletal system, uh, the muscular, sorry, the muscular system allows the movement of the body and facial expression to occur, also helps to maintain posture and production of heat. Yes, the production of heat. So when you are cold and you're shivering, your skeletal muscles are contracting so that they can generate heat. So that's the main job of the muscular system. The next system is going to be the urinary system. So the urinary system, the main job, eliminating our waste, the nitrogenous waste from the body, also for regulation of water, electrolyte, and acid-base balance of the blood. Basically, it tells your body how, you know, if you're dehydrated, you know, we need to, re you know, retain water. If you um, have drank a lot of water, we need to get rid of that. Electrolytes like sodium, your chloride, all of that has been regulated by the urinary system. Then we have the nervous system. So the nervous system, this is important because this helps to communicate with the outside world. This system helps you to determine whether you're cold, you're hot, um, what's going on in the outside world. So it, it's going to respond to internal and external changes by um, activating muscles and glands. And it's also helped with, like I said, communicate with the outside world. Then there's gonna be the reproductive system. So the reproductive systems are not necessarily important for survival, but they're just as important. The main job, whether it's male reproductive system or female reproductive system, is to produce offspring, is to produce offspring. So the testes, they, in males, they produce sperm and male sex hormone and, um, and male ducts and glands, and they aid, they help sperm to be delivered to the female reproductive system. Then we have the female reproductive system. The main organ here will be the ovaries, which produce eggs and female sex hormones. And they offer female structures. Um, the other female structures serve as sites for fertilization and development of the baby. And the mammary glands um, help to pr of the breast help to produce milk to nourish the baby. So they're um, very important, but you can see here with the male and female reproductive system, they don't really play any major role in terms of survival.